So one question in comparison that we get asked for a lot is, you know, comparing webhooks to PubSub. So they're both mechanisms for sending and receiving messages in event-driven architectures. And so they actually have a lot of similarities, but there's also some key differences between the two that make them, you know, better suited for certain use cases versus others. Um, so webhooks are a way for web applications to provide other applications with real-time information. Right, so when a specific event occurs in application A, it sends a message to a URL that application B has specified beforehand. And that's kind of like their webhook endpoint that they're going to be receiving these messages to. And then when that event happens in application A, application A sends a message, application B receives it, and then does some, you know, probably usually triggers some sort of workflow within application B. So this makes webhooks really good for kind of integrating and sending data between two different applications. Um, so the example that we like to use is Stripe. Um, if you're a Stripe customer and you need to do something every time an invoice gets paid, you would want to set up a webhook endpoint and tell Stripe, hey, anytime an invoice is paid, send us a webhook to this URL. PubSub is short for publish and subscribe. So it's a messaging pattern that allows applications to communicate with each other. Um, without really having to know about each other's existence. So the PubSub system, the publisher would send their events and messages to a topic, and then any subscriber can subscribe to the topic and they would receive the messages from that topic. Um, so it's, a, it's kind of a one-to-many connection. Um, webhooks, in a way, can behave like that, but Inherently, webhooks are one-to-one -one connections, and you would set up separate endpoints to send different events to different customers, and even one customer may set up separate endpoints for separate events. Um, so each webhook endpoint is a one-to-one -one connection, whereas with PubSub, the publisher is publishing to one topic, and any number of subscribers would subscribe to that topic. So it's a one-to-many uh, event uh, broadcasting system, essentially. Um, so in a way that PubSub system is acting kind of as a broker, so it routes messages from publishers to subscribers um, without them really being connected directly. Uh, it all goes through this concept of a topic. So this makes PubSub really good for situations where a publisher and a receiver are, want information, but they don't actually know each other. They don't know who each other are, uh, and they don't really need to establish a connection with each other. So a good example would be a news site or a news website. They might want to use PubSub to send updates to whoever wants them uh, whenever they publish a new story. So whether it's like a stock market app or a weather app or a sports app, they can all just subscribe to the same topic. And the reason why this is different from how webhooks works is that webhooks are usually going to be sending information specific to a specific user, right? So in the Stripe use case, Stripe is not going to broadcast that an invoice for Svix was paid to anybody that wants to know when a Svix invoice is paid. Really, it's only for Svix to know. Uh, so that's kind of, I think, the main difference between how these two systems are used. I think, in a way, they can, you know, kind of masquerade as for each other's use cases, but they work very well for their specific use case. So given that webhooks kind of give you this control one-to-one, -one, who is receiving this specific message, which you really want uh, in, in the type of uh, use case like Stripe. Right, you don't really want to be broadcasting all of the paid invoices for a company to other companies. So webhooks really give you a lot of control over message delivery, who they're being delivered to, what endpoint is, what message is being delivered to what endpoint uh, is very granular. Whereas with PubSub, the publisher really has no control over who receives the message. It's really just kind of like a broadcast. Uh, more than a specific message. So you can kind of think of it as, you know, like a news station versus, you know, me sending somebody mail. So kind of given this difference in control, PubSub 
is usually used in internal systems where there's some message that gets sent and handled globally and all listeners are trusted. So that lack of control over who receives the message isn't really an issue because you already know everybody that could potentially listen in. So a good example of this would be something like Twitter, right? As an internal system. When somebody posts a message, anybody that follows them may want to receive and see their post. On the other hand, webhooks are probably more suitable for use cases with external applications uh, where you really need to know who you're sending it to, right? So I think Stripe, sending information about Swix, or even with Swix, we send information about um, people's webhook services. So in the end, I think webhooks and PubSub, they're both very, very useful. Um, and they're both for sending and receiving messages in event-driven architectures. Um, but PubSub is more broadcasting, um, whereas webhook is more targeted specific messages from one sender to one receiver. So if you listen to this difference and you're like, oh, what I need are webhooks, please check out Svix. Uh, we offer webhook sending as a service and we make it super easy and simple for you to implement a reliable and scalable webhook service. Thanks.